And now your host, real estate broker, consultant, and best-selling author, Todd Tremonti. Welcome, 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 people. Welcome to the show, DFW Real Estate Weekly. Check out the podcast. We got to start off just with some brutal honesty, people. Back to school time. It's back to school time. That's how the kids feel. That's right. how the kids feel. You know how the adults feel. Back to school time, ladies and gentlemen. Boy, do we value education in our home. <laughs> it's like that Christmas song. Stop it. Stop it. It's like that Christmas song that's like, uh, mom and dad can hardly wait for school to start again. Anyway, um, it is back to school. And more than moms and dads and children and aunts and uncles and grandparents and kids get being bored and driving people nuts and all that stuff. We love our kids, but you know, summer's tough. Here's the thing. Um, it affects the real estate market. I don't know if you knew that Ian. Uh, I've, I've heard you heard it a it few times could be one or, of the worst or, or a few thousand. Hey folks, you're listening to Texas real estate. Nope. DFW real estate. This is still DFW real estate with Todd Tremonti. We have a full studio today. We want to encourage you not to miss a minute of it. DFW real estate weekly on all your podcast apps where you can catch full episodes as well as many, many bonus episodes and other educational real estate audio. You can go to Todd and find a access to hundreds and hundreds. As a matter of fact, 458 at current count educational real estate videos. But if you have a question right now, what can folks do Ian? if they had a real estate question, right now you can do one of two things you could give us a call or you could go to the website you can go to touchyourmoneyteam.com you can fill out any form you can find on the website and somebody from our team could be me could be andrew could be jeremy john david gibson brandon brandon could be anyone could be anyone could reach out you can also give us a call 214-310 Zero, 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 eight. If I'm not, say, in the age range where voice is over phone lines is my favorite thing, could I could I text? Sure, you could text that same number, 214-310-0008. I really appreciate having you here, Ian. That was helpful. Welcome. The Yanni Donnie, ladies and gentlemen, the English wonder himself. He is in studio. He's helping give out phone numbers. He is a resource. We also have Full Price Courtney, the producer of all things audio, video. And digital. We're talking YouTube. We're talking podcasts. We're talking reels, shorts, the vids, the dance vids, all of it. Full price Courtney, the producer herself. Hey, let's get into it. What are we talking about? We're talking about back to school. And boy, are there lots of questions. Before that, let's uh, tell you about Patrick Gleros and his entire team over at Cardinal Financial. If you're looking to get a mortgage, maybe refinance, maybe you're thinking about getting an investment property, uh, one of your first stops needs to be patrickgleros.com. You can begin an application right there on his website. You can call him if you prefer to call him at 972-728-3420, NMLS number 308804. Or you can go to touchmoneyteam.com, click the radio tab, and you can find all of our recommended pros and vendors right there. Let's talk about going back to school. Let's talk about what makes this really a less than ideal time in real estate for like a one to two week period. Why is that? Well, first of all, we put, quote, in real estate at the end of most of our sentences around here. So it's like, what is back to school like? in real estate what's a storm like in real estate because that's what we do we're here to lead guide and advocate for our clients on the Tatra money home selling team hundreds of buyers and sellers a year thousands of potential buyers and sellers a year and our friends neighbors and listeners so that's why we think of everything through the real estate lens and back to school in north texas is actually one of if not some years the most significant impact factor, predictable impact factor in our real estate market. Now, what does that mean? In basic terms, it means back to school happens in August. August is more often than not the hottest for many of us, most miserable weather of the year, which makes it honestly less desirable to drive around and get in and out of the car and go in and out of other people's homes. Some of them vacant or maybe even without power at times. It's also a time of year that people are doing their late summer travel. They're getting in that last trip. Um, They are thinking about kids and school responsibilities, book 
clothing, sports requirements. Uh, even people that don't have children and aren't really terribly concerned with children in their schools are often adjusting to school zones, the commute to work getting, being longer again, coworkers who are distracted. It is a l very low efficiency time in our real estate market. We often tell sellers, and we can unpack this more later, to potentially wait and get a house on the market after the one to two week, sometimes three week period where we are in this back to school mentality. Not always, there's nuance to that strategy. We often give get people to speed up a little bit to beat that time. There's some buying opportunities there, but we'll talk a little bit more about that later. But that's some of why this week really is documentable and predictable every single year. Some might say, Ian, that it is the weirdest, strangest, toughest, worst week in DFW real estate every single year. But it is strange because we really don't even see this happening with things like Thanksgiving or Christmas. Like we don't see the downshift that we see during this. I feel like kind of that first week of August is okay. And then the schools start going back. So that second and third week, generally speaking, are the worst two. Correct. But sometimes it could bleed into that that fourth week as well. Yeah. And, and during the COVID period where everybody was not even sure what school yeah, was, it, was it lasted like six, six weeks. seven yeah. weeks. Uh, and some years it's weather dependent and just kind of what day of the week school districts are starting on and, you know, how the summer rolled out weather-wise and other holidays. This stuff seems silly and nuanced, but it matters. Well, we're going to be experiencing something new that a lot of people will be if you have more than one child is yep. we're going to have two kids at different two different school, schools with different start There's times, different start times, <clears throat> and they're not next to each other. And so, so just, we're going to like plan all of that out. Let's take that as an example and stay, stay with me here. Um, whether if let's just say I work with you, which I do, but let's just say you work in a traditional office, whatever. And I work with you and I don't have kids and I don't really care about back to school. I'm not buying back to school clothes and lunch boxes and planning sports schedules or figuring out new drop off times, but you are, Yep. then you and I are working on a project together. You are distracted. There's, there's more of a demand on your time to figure out, well, how do I get, get to work on time? You know, can I make that meeting? Do we need to move some things around? Really the entire community is in an adjustment transitional phase when children, teachers, administrators, and I always joke about it, but it's serious. School zones matter. We haven't had blinking lights slowing us down one or two or three or four times on the way to work for the last few months. And we're about to, in the next couple of weeks, things change and it impacts the real estate market, but it's not all bad. We'll get into some of the good stuff about that a little bit later in the show. Yeah, I know like for me, I'm already thinking through how do I get myself to the office to start at a certain time because we start at 8.30. Well, my son's school starts at 8.30 but I can drop off as early right. as like 7.45. And you got to sell that to the so kids like, really well. You get to get earlier and shoot hoops or talk to your friends. Yeah. We had to, we've been doing that for years. Yeah, that's some of the funny stuff. But at, at the end of the day, it impacts your real estate. It absolutely does. The value of your home, the timing of buying, the timing of selling. The cool thing is there are some great opportunities to take advantage of during this time, but there are some risks to avoid, and we'll explain some of those in a minute. I do want to tell you that if you haven't had a roofer on top of your house, looking at your roof in the last two years, you hear me say it all the time. I don't know why you haven't done it, but if you haven't thought it was the right time, or if you're a new listener, you need to have a roofer on your roof to inspect it at least every 24 months. It is irresponsible not to do that, and you can trust PMR Roofing to do that. Those are the roofers that we trust with our homes. They just put a roof on my house. They did some hail work for um, Jeremy, maybe one other team member. I'm trying to remember if there's anybody else that hit that last hailstorm. Um, and they do inspections and repairs and replacement work for tons and tons of our clients, friends, neighbors. PMRroofing.com. So what are some of the benefits of this back to school time then? Because I feel as though maybe for home buyers, maybe there's a little bit of an opportunity there where they could come in on a time when there's not as many people that are gonna be maybe out looking at homes if you have the flexibility and availability to do so. Yep. 
potentially there's so an opportunity. So let's talk about there. the buy side now, and then second half of the show, maybe we'll get into some of the seller stuff or, or a little bit later. Um, on the buy side, this is what the back to school season, whether we refer to the weather, the people being distracted, the last summer travel, or literally the first couple of weeks of school. This is the impact for a buyer. Less buyers are out there buying to compete with you. Sellers are at minimum distracted, but most likely have lost some confidence because the number of showings will go down. The number of phone calls will go down. The number of requests for information will go down. Some of them are thinking that is literally the week where they start thinking, shoot, we missed the summer market. It's over. Summer's over. Not, not, not the weather, not the season of summer, but the, the mental cycle, seasonal cycle of life season of kids being out of school is over. It's hot. I'm uncomfortable. Am I going to have to wait until next spring and summer? So you have a lower confidence seller. You have less competition from other buyers. And honestly, you have a short window, but a window to take advantage of positives for you and negatives for sellers. Now, this isn't like go harm sellers. It's just those are that's the leverage points for negotiation and for availability. The other thing that often happens is because so many people are distracted, very few new buyers enter the market and fewer new sellers enter the market. So it's a tighter market, but as a buyer, you can really find some opportunities, especially if you are a cash buyer right now. If you're a cash buyer right now and you would like to buy a home in the next few weeks, call me right now, 214-310. 0008. You can call me or text me 214-310-0008. If you're a home buyer and you could buy with cash, we need to talk right now about taking advantage of this unique window, one to three weeks, where we have a unique strategy that we certainly don't share all of it on the radio to help you take a phenomenal advantage of this very short term opportunity for cash buyer. If you're not a cash buyer, all those benefits are still there for you as a financed buyer other than cash. So it's still a good time to be a financing buyer. It's actually better for you than most times, but a home run opportunity if you're a cash buyer. Call now, 214-310-0008. Do not wait. If you want to buy in the short term, this is going to be one of your best windows of opportunity for a while. 214-310-0008. DP Lambert is who I talk to anytime that I need to uh, look at my home insurance, my auto insurance. He has saved me thousands of dollars over the years. He's saved Todd thousands of dollars. And I just spoke to him, you know, two weeks ago because I had some hail damage and I needed to get that taken care of on my vehicle. And his team is quick and responsive and they got everything done that needed to be done. And it was a really, really smooth, seamless process. Not only are they gonna get you the best price, they're gonna make sure that you get the absolute best coverage that you can get as well. Whether that's through bundling, whether that's through doing it separately with different companies, they're gonna look at all the options to make sure that you get the best coverage at the best price. dp.lambert, L-A-M-B-E-R-T at goosehead.com. That's his email address. You can call him at 214-838-5684. Or if you forget any of the vendors that we talk about, you can go to toddtramoneyteam.com, click the radio tab, and you will find everybody that we recommend Right there. I have a super quick question for producer Full Press Courtney real fast. Are you a proponent of tax-free weekend? Do you take advantage of tax-free weekend? I don't. I didn't think so. With a name like Full Price Courtney, why would you? Um, it's I don't want to save money. I only want I to pay only top want to spend. dollars. She's not even excited about the recent property tax bill. She wants to pay full That I much. am excited oh, about. Oh, okay. Hold on. One, 18 billions enough. Um, no, I, August 11th through 13th, I think, is the, the dates this year. As we think about back to school, I think a lot of people think about that tax-free weekend and they go wildly overspend on children's clothes and personal clothes because they can save the, uh, the, the uh, sales tax. But it, it, that's just another data point as to why back to school really is a whole different mindset shift season that lasts one to three weeks. I know there's a lot of people out there that get really excited about our Cockney rhyming slang segment. Oh I'm gonna disappoint. We're not gonna do it this week. <gasps> I need a mental break because mm -hmm. we've been on a little bit of a losing streak. We've had him on the ropes. So That's I gotta, why. I got to get we've some research been, in there. We've been throttling him. Maybe the Cockney rhyming scheme there would be like a whip toddle. I don't know. I'm making but stuff I, up. I don't want to disappoint you with not having something completely unrelated to real estate. So, Oh, hold on. Let me get you intro music then. Okay. 
Tell us what we're doing. This sounds horrible. This is just simply me letting you know that one week from today, the Middlesbrough season begins, Todd. One week from today. Yay. You excited? Up the burrow. I'm excited. I'm excited. How do you think we're going to do this year? Oh, gosh. Uh, Not relegated. We're not. There will not be relegation. You think we're going to go up? What do we have to do to go up? First or second goes up automatically, and then third through f- six ends up in a playoff. That's where we ended up last year. We came fourth, and we lost in the playoffs. How do we feel about the manager real fast? Oh, Super Michael Carrick? Yeah, we're going up. I mean, that's his nickname, we're Super Michael up. Carrick. We're going up. We open the season. On a throne of lies. Oh, sorry. Next Saturday against Millwall. <laughs> up the bro. Millwall. Up the bro. All right, here, let's do it. Um, if you have not yet prepared for fall, And by the way, what's coming later in the show is how we take advantage of the fall market after this back to school season. But if you have not prepared your yard for the fall, a lot of you don't even think about that. The fall is my favorite season. If you're asking Todd Tremonti, when do you like to be outside playing with family, friends, neighbors in Texas the most? It's the fall. It's the tail end of the warmth of summer where we're still swimming a bit. And it's the beginning of cool mornings and cool evenings, coffee and barbecuing out on the patio riding, you know, playing in the backyard, traveling, camping, all that. I love the fall. So as you think about planning your landscaping, your yard to maximize and benefit from the fall, I want you to reach out to Keen Landscaping. That's K-E-A-N-E, keenlandscaping.com. Hey, in less than a minute, what do people need to know about Weatherford? Weather forward. I used to like how Randy Galloway said it on the ESPN radio show. Weather forward. Um, Weatherford used to feel like New Mexico, if you live in Dallas and Fort Worth. It used to feel like it was very, very far out there. But with growth and development, with Alito, Walsh Ranch, Benbrook, all these things, it really feels like a very reachable outer edge community from Fort Worth and, and reasonably from Dallas. Weatherford has some absolutely beautiful properties. You got you could find anything you want in Weatherford. From an entry level new build to acreage property to farm and ranch to some absolutely gorgeous luxury high end stuff. So you can find as far as a home, just about anything you want. You have some revitalization of retail centers and some new development of restaurants and shopping and retail. You are probably a, an extension community away from everything you would want. Maybe you bump into Alito or Fort Worth to get the few things that Weatherford doesn't have five each of. Uh, but you've got everything you need in Weatherford for an incredible family, traditional lifestyle community that, by the way, is welcoming to everyone, whether you're a big family or not. But it is a wonderful place to have a little bit more space, a potentially slower pace of life, a little bit of country, a little bit of city within reach of the big city with uh, decent job opportunities and some businesses growing and moving there. It's a wonderful place to live. That is Weatherford, Texas. Perfect. You nailed it. Did I? Yeah. Hey, hey, come on now. It was excellent. Internal clock. Couldn't have, uh, couldn't have said it better, Todd, myself. God, thank you for a rare compliment. It feels so good. You're welcome. Um, what, are you, what are we seeing when it comes to interest rates right now? I know, obviously, the, the news media, everything's bad, 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 bad. Well, I will we, admit that I sent a text message to Patrick Glaros last week and said, man, these interest rates really do suck. <laughs> so, look, I'm, I'm not uh, without impact either. Right. So and and we were joking with each other that I was acting like a normal consumer. But, you know, I've got a project working that we're going to do some borrowing on. And I was like, oh, man, that really is not fun. But I'll still take that over where rates were at other times in my career. uh, And I'll certainly take it over of where they've been in the past. But the reality is I am using currently what many people to believe what many people believe to be high interest rates as an opportunity to look for for other opportunities. Because many people are like, I'm not in the game at that rate, and I don't have the cash. I am more in the game because of that rate. Because maybe I've got to pay more in rate, maybe I've got to pay more interest, but I'm paying less in purchase price. I'm competing with way fewer buyers. And I'm talking about, I'm looking at some commercial opportunities as well as residential. And I am beginning in the last two to three weeks to see, and I'm not gonna share my whole investment strategy unless you're a client, but, I'm beginning to see some opportunities begin. You know, for a couple of years now, people have been like, here comes a recession, save your cash. We're gonna take advantage of all these opportunities and people just have not seen them coming. 
I am beginning in just the last few weeks to see some real opportunities in the areas that I like to invest. And the rate, honestly, although I don't love the rate, the rate is part of the advantage because it's keeping my competition away and it's beginning to bring my purchase price opportunities down into a more reasonable realm. Does that make sense? Yep. If you haven't checked your home valuation recently, do so by going to toltramoneyteam.com and click the home valuation button. And in less than one minute, you can find out what your home is worth, what it would sell for, rent for, what your home equity is, what a cash offer might look like. Um, the home equity tool really is cool. And there's so many other Very things cool. on there that um, that you can get. toltramoneyteam.com, click the home valuation tab. I have a question for Courtney. We get to do some work with Sean Hannity from time to time. And I always laugh about Hannity's responses to my comments. And Ian just Hannity'd me. So Sean will be like, Todd, tell me what's going on in the Dallas market. And he's, and he's got his big, you know, super radio voice, right? And I'm like, we're selling houses for 12% over the market average and 31 days faster. And he's like, okay. <laughs> and then he just moves on to the next thing. Like, he thinks it's cool. He just doesn't have a wow in him. That's not how he rolls. And we'll, I give you in a on the money, a 30 second answer or 60 second answer to a question. I've explained it. And he's like, yep. Okay. Is that, is that accurate? Is that helpful? Yep. <laughs> just moving on. I got on. things to do. He handed me. Things to say. He handed me. And Courtney knows what I'm talking about. What else do we have? If you have questions, 214-310-0008. That's 214-310-0008. I'll tell you right now, if you're thinking about buying or selling a home right now, we need to talk. There are unique opportunities in the marketplace right now. If you're a buyer, we talked about less competition, less confident sellers. If you're a seller, timing is very, very important right now. There are some bad times to put your home on the market in the next 30 to 60 days, but there are also some really great strategies to be one of the only homes on the market with the right messaging and the right attitude. If you're thinking about buying, selling, or investing in real estate, you cannot start that conversation too early. Call us right now on Saturday, unless you're listening to the podcast, at 214-310-0008. If you are listening to the podcast, call us anytime or text 214-310-0008. If you have not listened to the podcast, find DFW Real Estate Weekly on all your podcast apps. We do the weekly radio show on there, as well as at least one, if not sometimes more, bonus episodes with educational, valuable opportunistic content. That's DFW Real Estate Weekly with Todd Tremonti on all your podcast apps. If you're ready to start the conversation and you can't do that too early, sadly, most people wait too late to talk about buying and selling. If you're ready to talk about buying and selling and you want to do that in the next year, call or text 214-310-0008. We'll get you hooked up with one of our full-time dedicated specialists and have them at no cost to you whatsoever offer you about an hour of their time to walk you through what's best for you, ask you some thought-provoking questions, and get you prepared to go win big in this real estate market. If you need anything else, find us online at thatremindyteam.com. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, party people. This is DFW Real Estate Weekly. And if you ever, ever, ever make the horrible mistake of missing this show live, you just catch us on the podcast, DFW Real Estate Weekly with Todd Tremonti and all your podcast apps where you can catch not only the entire show, if you missed all or part of that, but you can catch bonus episodes, sometimes multiple bonus episodes per week that you cannot catch here live on the air. So if you'll go to ToddTremontiTeam.com, that's right. ToddTremontiTeam.com. You can find uh, links to videos, to audio, to podcasts, to uh, scorecards to figure out the, the score of how ready you are to buy and sell and all the other things. You can search every home by every real estate company in all of DFW right there at DutchMoneyTeam.com. And if you have a question for us right now, you call or text 214 214- 310-0008. Call or text 210-310-0008. So, nope, that's wrong. 214-310-0008. Todd, we specialize in land. It's true. Homes on land. Not wrong. And so we got a question um, from a listener. What should I know about easements, boundaries, and 
rights of way when purchasing a property with land? Hold on for that enthralling question. First, let's just tell the folks that Patrick Glaros is making this thing happen again. First segment is always, always, always brought to you by, and what that means is Patrick contributes so that we can put this information on air, and he also contributes in a world-class way for thousands and thousands of our clients. Patrick Glaros and his mortgage team can be found online at patrickglaros.com, G-L-A-R-O-S, patrickglaros.com, and MLS number 308804. If you're looking for his information and you forget it, that's okay. Just go to toddtremonteteam.com, click on the radio tab, and all of the pros that we talk to here on the show and about, all their names, phone numbers, emails, websites, it's all there at toddtremonteteam.com. All right, so the question is about easements and access. Will you ask it again so I can answer it specifically? Yeah, what should I know about easements, boundaries, and rights of way when purchasing a property with land? Okay, so let me give you the short answer more than you need to know within typical residential single family lot. And the reason is um, quite often you are in a part of town that is less regulated. And what I mean by that is you're probably not in a neighborhood that has, you know, one main street that goes down the middle and maybe an alley on the back or garages on the front. You're probably in a scenario if you have land, let's just say, again, our definition of land is typically one to 10 acres. By all means, we can help other people, but that's the core of, of when we say homes on land, someone with a big backyard, right? If you have, let's just use five acres. There's a very good chance that's what's bordering around your property are other acreage properties, not, you know, driveways and neighborhood roads and drainage ditches and things like that. It's a little different setup. So because of that, you may need to cross a neighbor's property to get to yours. Another neighbor may need to cross your property to get to theirs. You may have a barbed wire fence instead of a board on board fence. So when we talk about easements, that would be the city, the county, the power company having sort of access to your property, even though you own it, there's some restrictions to what you can do. So for example, on a property I previously owned, there was a giant power pole 40 feet into my property off the main road. It was by one of the fence lines, but by all means, I can't mess with that. They have to have access to that. They have to be able to come and go whenever they want and climb up that pole and do whatever they want. And that's what an easement is? An easement is someone else having access to your property. You might have seen a gas line easement on a property before uh, where there was like a a gas meter or a pipeline that went under a part of your your property. Uh, Almost every city in a neighborhood or in a major road has an easement for like 10 feet off the road because they might be burying pipelines or drainage. They can access that drainage ditch. You can use it. You might even be responsible to mow it, but you could never build anything there because they have to have access to get underground. So that's an oversimplified example, but an easement is where somebody else has access. If you have a home on land, you could have a major pipeline coming through your property. You could have a creek or a river that you have certain level of utility and access to, but you can't like, you can't dam up a river and people downstream don't have water anymore. So there's things, there's a lot of different versions of what we're talking about, but these are things, if you have land, you're more likely to be dealing with. What was the other part of the question? Well, like what's rights of way? Yeah. Same idea. The the way I'm going to answer this may not be how it was asked, but it's the way most people would need to deal with it. And it's what we would call ingress and egress, the act, the ability to act, enter and exit a property. And when we're talking about homes on land, uh, some, more often than people would realize, you may have a, um, I would call it landlocked, but what, what we mean is there are properties all the way around you. So you have to go through someone's property. That person is legally required to give you access to your property behind theirs. People don't always like it. And you'll hear about these horrible disputes between people where the person whose land you have to cross locks the gate and doesn't give you the key or the combination or doesn't maintain that road or um, doesn't let you maintain that road. I mean, those are ugly situations, but that's why you want to look at it before you buy. So you're aware, what might I be dealing with just to get on and off my property? How does water flow on and off my property? 
How could the power company access my property? And then are there parts of my property that I couldn't build on because of an easement? Or other, this wasn't asked, but a relevant part of the question would be floodplain, right? I have 37 acres, but 25 of it is in a floodplain. So I can go mow the grass, kick a ball, raise a garden, but if it, if it could flood, I cannot legally get a permit to put a barn on it much less a house. So it's 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 good to have, but it's not quite as useful or valuable. Okay, so it's interesting you brought up permits. <clears throat> Are there any specific considerations that you need to have for building a home on land? Such yes. as permits or architectural <laughs> guidelines. Like, yes. can you do whatever you want? Um, depends, and that's an ugly question. It depends because if I am in deep East Texas and you've never, there's, you know, you've never heard of the city name that I'm technically in because I bought property, rural property out on the edge. I don't have any neighborhood deed restrictions. I don't have an HOA. I don't have any city code. I'm in a County, you know, everyone's in a County in Texas. But the fact is that every time I take one of those things off, no HOA, no city deed, no, no community deed restrictions, no city code, I have less and less and less and less of those requirements you're talking about. So can I do whatever I want? I mean, you can do more and more and more of what you want, the less of those things apply to you. There, I mean, there are like laws of things you can't do that are dangerous that could harm somebody. Like if you build a building of a certain height, you have to use steel instead of wood. Um, you can't do things that are unsanitary or harmful to people. But outside of those things, yes. If you want to build yourself a pink stucco castle replica, you could do that out in a rural area where there's no restrictions. You cannot do that in Fort Worth, Texas. There are restrictions and codes. You cannot do that in Dallas or Plano or Frisco or Arlington. The, 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 there's going to be multiple layers of restrictions that say that is going to negatively impact your neighbor's value. You cannot do that. You can't just, you know, build a structurally unsound building just about anywhere, but you can't build a, a wildly unattractive or a home or a building that doesn't look like the area. And then there to go to the other extreme, there are things called overlays. Uh, Lakewood, for example, in Dallas, um, was all over the news years ago because they just imposed these overlays. Basically, they said, if you're gonna tear down a house in Lakewood and build another one, it has to look like the other ones. People were like, what are you talking about? These old houses were 1,800 square feet. I wanna build a 5,800 square foot house. And they would say, basically, you can't do that. Or they would say, you can, but it needs to be these brown tones with a traditional roof, and it has to look like this from the front. And people were like, I bought the house and the land. I can do whatever I want. And the rule was, no, you can't because we voted and imposed this overlay, which is, it sounds like, it is what it sounds like. We laid on top of what was already there, new rules and restrictions. And we did it because the people that vote, which are usually a minority of the people that live there, wanted this. Now, that's not a crazy one, but that's an example of restrictions and rules that you may not have chosen, but they still definitely apply to your house. We're usually talking about homes on land, and land is oftentimes out in rural areas, but and we shot a video the other day that we'll publish pretty soon to the YouTube channel about buying your dream home or building one on land in the city, which for a lot of people is like the Shangri-La. Like that's the, that's the oasis. That's the ideal. I want land, but I don't want to be an hour and a half away from everybody. So if I can have land and the house and the location, that's check, 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 three out of three home run scenario. That's a tougher deal. Only tougher if you want to build something atypical. If you want to build a, a home that exists and belongs and looks like everything else, even if it's bigger or even if there's maybe a second home or a guest property or a barn, th those things are, are usually not going to be wildly restricted. If you haven't gotten your landscaping dialed in for the fall, and I'm telling you the fall is my favorite time to be outside in North Texas, uh, I think that's a pretty obvious reason. But right now, it feels like the sun outside, Courtney, and I don't love it. So that's that. Call Keen Landscaping if you don't have your landscaping in order to enjoy the fall and probably the vast majority of the winter. Keen Landscaping, K-E-A-N-E. -E, that's keenlandscaping.com. And while we're at it, if you don't know right now that your roof is in rock-solid shape, 
you need to get somebody up there. It costs very, very little to have somebody make sure that you're in great condition. It can be unbelievably expensive. If you don't know, and we get one more rainstorm after the wind, after the hail, after the heat that we've had beating down our roofs. So call PMR Roofing or just go to their website, pmrroofing.com. You can call them 214-957-0839. Ask for Jordan Collins or go to the website, pmrroofing.com. Or just like everybody else we talk to on the show, if you forget, just go to touchreminderteam.com. And on our website, you click the radio tab and you can find all the contact information for everybody we talk about. Really quick, if you're thinking about buying or selling a home before the end of 2023, we have got to talk. Call our team, 214-310-0008 or text 214-310-0008. Or go online to ToddTremontiTeam.com. Now, if you're not ready to call us right now today, that's fine. Save this phone number in your cell phone. And next week or in a couple of weeks, when you talk to everybody you need to talk to and you're ready to go, give us a call. 214-310-0008. Last warning. Do not wait too late. We're finding that 80 plus percent of people wait too late to have the conversation about buying or selling. Now, it doesn't mean it's too late to buy or sell, but it means they they waited so long, they're losing their leverage. They're losing their big opportunities. They're losing their ability to do this uh, with all the protections. So they're in a hurry and they have to make impulsive choices or they have to be, uh, have less leverage and give up some real opportunities. So save this phone number in your phone Call us as soon as you feel ready. And if you don't feel ready, maybe we can help you get ready or maybe help you set a longer timeline. 214-310-0008. Todd, it's... Oh my gosh, what's wrong with my voice today? I don't know, but it's it's working out. Okay, Uh, it's time for our Big Butt segment. Mm. Big Butt. Appreciation has tapered, but homeowners have tons of equity. Tell us more. Yeah, that's a... It's a good point. Let me explain why anyone cares about that thought. So appreciation, meaning home value increases, because I also appreciate you, Courtney. Thanks, Um, But homes appreciate, and that's not a guarantee. Homes don't always appreciate. Now, they almost always appreciate if if you'll give it a long enough timeline. Um, But people like to argue that. So homeowner appreciation has tapered. What we mean by that is a couple of years ago, home values were going up 1% per month or more. Now they're probably going up 1% per quarter, some areas more. Um, but homeowners have tons of equity. Now, why does that matter? The reason it matters is there's been lots of headlines and lots of talking heads saying uh, the market's going to crash, there's going to be a big giant real estate recession, the bubble's going to bust. Home values are going to go down, you know, fools, absolute fools telling people wait to buy because home values are going to come down. Now, I'm not saying values aren't going to come down and aren't have haven't already come down in some places. I can explain why I think those that that advice is foolish. But the big but here is. let, Let me rephrase it. Home value, home appreciation is tapering. So. The market's going to get tough, but the reason it won't crash is that homeowners have lots of equity. So what we mean by that is people aren't bailing out of houses and selling at a deep discount and foreclosing and sitting on the market for months and months and months at a time, because what you're telling me, Courtney, is I bought my house for 300. It went up to 500 and now it isn't racing up to 600. So if I wanted to sell, am I bummed out that it's not at 600? Well, it doesn't even matter. I mean, maybe I am, maybe I'm not, but it's still worth 500. And if I'm in an area where even it slipped a little bit and I'm at 460, I bought it for 300 not that long ago. So I still have a bunch of equity. And if I've been paying my mortgage on time, I've paid down some debt. And so I have even more equity. The difference between what it's worth, what I could sell it for, and what I owe on it. So that's why you're not seeing a bunch of houses on the market. You're not seeing a bunch of people bail out and panic. They have homes that they bought at 3% interest rates that went up hundreds of thousands of dollars. And even if that's come back down a little or went flat, they're not panicking. They might be annoyed 
you know, I wanted to go buy that house, but that house went up too. And now rates have gone up. So maybe I'll just stay where I am. But they're not miserable or panicking or abandoning homes or failing to maintain them. They have a bunch of equity. And that's something that hasn't happened in a scenario like this in a long time. Everyone likes to point back to 2008 and 9. There wasn't a ton of equity in 2008 and 9 like this. Um, and there was very, very different borrowing standards. So totally different ballgame. Okay, but can you help us understand home equity? Like, is it really economic security? Nope. How about that? How about that for a real estate broker on his radio show? I'm shocked. It is, but I don't want you to act and live like it is. So here's what I mean by that. First of all, what is equity? The easiest definition, and you can get more technical, but it's the difference in what you could actually sell your home for and what you owe on it. So I can think my house is worth a million, but if I could actually sell it for 600 and I owe 300, the equity is 300. And the reason I said no is we don't really truly fully know what the equity is until someone pays us for the house. So we can believe it's a million and think I got $700,000 of equity. And at the end of the day, we could put it on the market. And after months and months and months, the best offer we can get is 600 and we go to closing and we get 600. Then we had $300,000 in equity. And that's beautiful. It's security. But that number's moving around all the time. We talk about price elasticity. We talk about the market's always moving. Real estate's hyper, hyper local. Your house is different than your street, which is different than your block and your neighborhood and your zip code and your city and your town, blah, blah, blah. The point is that value is changing all the time. So this idea, that's why I tell people to check their property value once a month. You can do that at valuethishouse.com. But the reason we think that's important is so you do know that number, but you're aware that that number's moving. Because it is, it legit, just like your stock portfolio is moving or the value of, you know, your diamond ring, if you wanted to sell it, the value of gold and silver and platinum and diamonds moves around all the time. The value of your car moves around as it's more scarce or fuel prices are up or down or, you know, whatever. But that's happening with your house. My mom always says that things are only worth what someone will pay for it. How yeah. does that? That is what I just said. Yes. But let me, let me contradict myself a little bit. From a financial perspective, that is true. But I believe that your house and your home should be valued in more than financial terms, right? So your equity is the difference between what somebody will actually pay you and what you owe. But is that what it's worth to you and your family? No, it might be worth way more to you and your family because of the life you get to live there or the sentimental value that it used to be your grandparents or the value that it's going to be your grandchildren's. You know, I have I have a home we're building right now. Uh, I'm creating something that I hope lasts much longer than I do. And my family and friends and others get to benefit for, from for way longer than I get to benefit from it. So there's value there ab over and above what somebody would pay me for it. Let me This business, for example, people have offered to buy this business from me. And I've said to them, I under, that's actually not a completely wild and unfair valuation, but it's worth way more to me because of the impact I get to have with it. And honestly, to some extent, it's sort of that, like, this is my baby. I developed it and it's worth more to me. So that is, I understand that other people wouldn't put a calculator to it the same, but I think that's true for homes, probably more than most real estate agents and brokers. I feel that non-financial value of a home is important for people to measure. And we do that with people when we have an initial consultation with them. So if people are thinking about buying or selling, one of our full-time, fully dedicated, world-class real estate experts will sit down with them for 90 minutes all usually at no charge and just ask them thought-provoking questions to help them understand what you just said. What, are, what do I value in this? What's most important to me? We understand money matters. If you're buying, you want to pay less. If you're selling, you want to get more. Commission matters. Taxes matter. Fees matter. But what else matters? What matters more than money to you? And then we can help you go and make that happen. If that's something you're thinking about getting done in the next year or so, go to toddtremonteteam.com or call us right now. We'll set up a time just to have that conversation. No stress. We can do it over Zoom or the phone. No obligation necessary. It doesn't cost you anything. We can have that conversation about what's most valuable to you and how we can help you achieve that. You just call us 214-310-0008 or go online like my son says. That's your money team.com.
All right. All right. We've been working through your book. Full Price Courtney, producer Courtney, has handed me my own book, which means it's time it's to talk time. about a chapter. The ninth. So, the book is Five Lies That Will Ruin Your Real Estate Career and The Truth That Can Make You Wealthy. Um, this book was written for real estate agents, but it's valuable to a lot of people. If you're thinking about getting into real estate, we are looking for three or four new team members. Just go to TouchYourMoneyTeam.com. You can find the careers tab and we'll talk there. Number nine of the 12 truths that can make you wealthy is be thankful. And that's it. I'm just kidding. Be <laughs> thankful. The first sentence of the chapter, Courtney, says you are not entitled to anything. Preach. How do you feel about that? Preach. Society owes you not one single thing. I believe in the deepest part of my heart and mind that men and women ought to serve each other before we serve ourselves. But I believe that because of my faith in Jesus, who loved me when I was a filthy sinner, fully rejecting his love. That's why I believe that. Now, you may not share that faith, but here's the deal. An attitude of gratitude is a cheesy rhyming phrase, but it's legit. The most grateful people I know are the most generous people I know, and honestly, they're the most successful people I know. They're the people that give others credit. They're the people that are thankful when somebody pitches in and they don't try to take all the credit. They're thankful when somebody gives an extra effort. They're thankful for the air they breathe, the life they live, the freedom they have in America. They don't complain as much. doesn't mean they're perfect, but their gratitude seasons their relationships and their business. So... I want to be thankful. I think to be successful in real estate, to become wealthy, you have to grow in gratitude. There you have it. If you're thinking about buying, selling, or investing in real estate in the next 12 months, we need to talk. It'll cost you nothing, but it'll cost you a whole bunch if this conversation does not happen. Call 214-310-0008. You can never start too early. Sadly, most people start too late, and that is the buying and selling process. Call 214-310-0008. 0008 or go to toddtremonteteam.com. If you missed any part of this show or any other, check us out on all the podcast apps, DFW Real Estate with Todd Tremonti.